P-E-T-E-R-S-S-E-C-O-N-P-E-T-E-R-S-S-E-C-O-N-D-E-P-I-S-T-L-E. Introduction. The second epistle of Peter is written much later than his first epistle, because we see mention made in this epistle of all of Paul's epistles, which some of the circumcision believers were resting to their own destruction. It is also written just before his death, because he mentions the long-suffering of God. Much of what is written in the short epistle of Jude can be found in the three short chapters of this epistle by Peter. Chapter 1 Make your calling and election sure. 2 Peter 1 verse 1 Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us, Peter compares himself with his readers as having obtained the same like precious faith as they, through the righteousness of God and their Savior Jesus Christ. Jude calls it that the common salvation, which was once delivered unto the saints. In Jude 3, to say Peter was writing to them that have obtained like precious faith with us meant that Peter was writing to his fellow countrymen that heard the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the grace of God that Paul preached was not restricted to the circumcision only, but was to all men, and it was a different gospel. Peter in Galatians chapter 2 recognized the faith, gospel, that Paul was preaching among the uncircumcised that was different from his. Galatians 2 verse 7, but contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, God had Peter and the eleven apostles stay and preach the gospel of the circumcision to the Jews, while Paul went after the Gentiles with the gospel of the uncircumcision. Galatians 2, 2 Peter 1 verse 2 Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God, and of Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. This is not the same thing that the Apostle of the Gentiles says at the beginning of each of his epistles. He says, Grace be unto you, and peace, from God the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 3, Grace be unto you, and peace, from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Jude 1 verse 2, Mercy unto you, and peace, and love, be multiplied. 2 Peter 1 verses 3 to 4, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. The knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, 2 Peter 2 verses 20-22, For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein, and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness, than, after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. This has to do with their godliness, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Joel 2 verses 28 to 29, And it shall come to pass afterward, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also, upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my Spirit. Luke 24 verse 29, But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went into Tari with them, Acts 1 verse 4, and, being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. Acts 2 verses 17 to 23, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my Spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will shew wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood, and fire, and vapor of smoke, the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come, and it shall come to pass, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him, being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. By these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. This is a reference to the exceeding great and precious promises given to the nation of Israel, mainly that God's word will be written on their hearts in the kingdom, 
and they will know to choose good. Jeremiah 31 verse 31 Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, and with the house of Judah. The devil comes along with the help of his doctrines of devils, and tells you that you can be like God and you can tell God what to do. Name and claim things that are not yours, speak things that are not into existence, and on and on. Not so. That is not at all what Peter meant by the divine nature. 2 Peter 1 verses 5 to 8 And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you, and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. When a believer begins to live out their faith by adding to their practices virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and charity they shall know Christ so much deeper. When his disciples start to act like him, they learn better what he was like and what it is to be a believer, and it makes them more fruitful to the world and to themselves in the knowledge that is gained from practicing their faith. 2 Peter 1 verse 9 But he that lacketh these things is blind, and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. He that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, they are only looking at the here and now during the tribulation period and not thinking about their coming king and kingdom. Purged from his old sins. Hebrews 9 verse 14. 2 Peter 1 verse 10 Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. In Peter's first epistle, he addresses it to the believing remnant scattered as strangers in heathen lands and he calls them elect according to the foreknowledge of God. 1 Peter 1 verse 2 While Jeremiah 31 verses 31 to 34 will be a permanent possession for the Jewish nation in the kingdom, it will only come and go upon them in the tribulation period as they surrender to God's will and pray for his power in those last days. If ye do these things, ye shall never fall, it can, and will, leave them if they get caught up in the affairs of this world. Hebrews 6 This is not possible today, in the dispensation of grace. 2 Peter 1 verse 11 For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. An entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom. For those that endure unto the end and entrance into their kingdom will be given them. We are not trying to enter Israel's earthly kingdom in the millennium. 2 Peter 1 verses 12 to 14 Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. Yeah, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ hath shewed me. Be established in the present truth. As long as he was alive as a minister to the circumcision, Israel, Peter continually put Israel in remembrance of the need to endure in the present truth. The present truth for Israel was their prophecy program that had been spoken or written by the prophets since the foundation of the world and that concerns God's plan to redeem the earth using believers from the nation of Israel. The present truth also implies that there is another truth for a later time which for Israel will be fully understood only when they come into their earthly kingdom. 1 Peter 5 verse 12 I must put off this my tabernacle. Peter was going to be with his ancestors in paradise, to await Israel's kingdom. 2 Peter 1 verses 15 to 16 Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables, when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. The very act of having this epistle written and copied and recopied over and over again, and ensuring it spreading out to all the circumcision believers allowed saints in Peter's day, and those in the future tribulation period to have God's directions to them ever before them. Eyewitnesses of his majesty, Peter tells his readers that he is not making these things up nor is there a group of Galileans that cunningly devised some fables to get followers, but they actually were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Matthew 16 verse 28 Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here, which shall not taste of death, till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Matthew 17 verses 1 to 3 And after six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun 
and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. This meant that on the mountain they saw Jesus transformed in his kingdom glory before them when he talked with Moses and Elijah about the kingdom. The apostles were simply relaying what God wanted them to know, to prepare them to enter into their kingdom. 2 Peter 1 verses 20-21 Knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. No prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. No one could say that this verse can mean this to me, and it can mean another thing to someone else. Prophecy was given to Israel, because they are the nation that will inherit the earth in their kingdom. We are not Israel we are the body of Christ. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Scripture is God speaking to mankind through the power of the Holy Ghost to the writers such as Peter to give us a Bible without error. The writers of Scripture did not have to rely on their feeble memories to give us God's Word. The Holy Ghost brought to memory everything that was needed to be written done. John 14 verses 25 to 26, These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. We have an inerrant Bible, it is God-breathed, inspired. Chapter 2 False Teacher 2 Peter 2 verse 1 But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. There were false prophets also among the people, Deuteronomy 13 verses 1 to 3, If there arise among you a prophet, or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them, thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God profiteth you, to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Jude 1 verse 3 Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you, and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. There shall be false teachers among you, they do not believe they are false teachers, but they sincerely believe that they are teaching people the truth, but in reality, they are damnable heresies, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. The devil takes a teaching that has its basis in the Bible and perverts it just enough to damn the listener's soul. This occurs when people wrongly divide the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 Even denying the Lord that bought them, Jude 1 verse 4, For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God, and our Lord Jesus Christ, whose end is swift destruction, this does not mean annihilation. Their physical bodies are destroyed, but they will still spend an eternity in the lake of fire one day, and it will be their own fault for believing and teaching these things. 2 Peter 2 verses 2-3 And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. Their pernicious ways, many will slowly be deceived by them, as they will be a part of the devil's lie program, they will sound like they are legitimate, and the multitudes will unfortunately follow them. They will be the state, or world religion, and all the world will wonder after their leader, but he will be the Antichrist, not the Christ, and their judgment will be swift as they are cast in the lake of fire. 2 Peter 2 verse 4, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. Jude 1 verse 6, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. The angels that sinned, those sons of God, that took to themselves daughters of men, and had offspring of them that became giants. Genesis 6 verses 1 to 8, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also, after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, 
and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man, and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Chains of Darkness, Revelation 20 verse 1, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, reserved unto judgment. They are held there until they are judged in the future, and cast into the lake of fire. 2 Peter 2 verse 5 And spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Genesis 6 verse 12 And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Genesis 7 verse 24 And the waters prevailed upon the earth an hundred and fifty days. The eighth person, Noah was the eighth person on the Arkansas 1 Peter 3 verse 20. 2 Peter 2 verses 6 to 9 And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds winky face. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Jude 1 verse 7 Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Just Lot, Lot's soul was righteous. He sinned because it was vexed by the activities around him that he gave into. The Day of Judgment, Acts 24 verses 14 to 15 But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law, and in the prophets, and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust. 2 Peter 2 verse 10 But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness, and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Jude 1 verse 8 Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. 2 Peter 2 verse 11 Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. Jude 1 verse 9 Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. 2 Peter 2 verse 12 But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Jude 1 verse 10, But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally, as brute beasts. In those things they corrupt themselves. Made to be taken and destroyed, they are not made to go to hell. They chose to go to hell, by rebelling against the truth of God's word. God knew that they would make this choice. He did not force them to choose it. They made it willingly so they may enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. 2 Peter 2 verse 13, And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are in blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Jude 1 verses 12 and 23, These are spots in your feasts of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds. Trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. 2 Peter 2 verses 14 to 16, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way, and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam the son of Bozer, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumbass speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. Jude 1 verse 11 Woe unto them! For they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. Numbers 22 22-33 And God's anger was kindled because he went, and the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way and his sword drawn in his hand, and the ass turned aside out of the way, and went into the field, and Balaam smote the ass, to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side, and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself unto the wall, and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, 
and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further, and stood in a narrow place, where was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee, that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in mine hand, for now would I kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, I am not I thine ass, upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Was I ever wont to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head, and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me and turned from me these three times, unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee, and saved her alive. 2 Peter 2 verse 17 These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Jude 1 verses 12 to 13 These are spots in your feasts of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness for ever. 2 Peter 2 verse 18 For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. Jude 1 verse 16 These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words having men's persons in admiration, because of advantage. 1 John 2 verse 16 For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. 2 Peter 2 verse 19 While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. The knowledge of the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ 2 Peter 2 verses 20-21 For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein, and overcome, the latter, and is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness, then, after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. The knowledge of the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, no one who believes in eternal security today should ever wonder that this book does not teach eternal security to its readers. 2 Peter 1 verse 2 Peter is an apostle to the nation of Israel and preaches to the children of Israel in the first century and to those going through the tribulation period as well. These people will have had the holy commandment delivered unto them by the 144,000 and by the two witnesses, and if they willfully turned from it to preach something else, they will be lost. Paul is the one preaching and teaching eternal security for the body of Christ in his epistles, not Peter, or the any of the twelve. They had different messages to different groups. Hebrews 6 verses 4 to 6, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, and have tasted of the heavenly gift, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God, and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. 2 Peter 2 verse 22 But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Proverbs 26 verse 11 As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. If a person receives light and rejects a portion of it that brings darkness to them, they cannot understand what it is that they have received, and so the only thing they can do is twist it and pervert it. It will be imperative in those days that people keep short accounts with God, and that they endure the things that come their way. Matthew 24 verse 13 But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Chapter 3 Be mindful of the words 2 Peter 3 verse 1, the second epistle. Beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. This second epistle, Peter was writing to the same people he had addressed his first epistle to, Jews that had been scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who had obtained like precious faith with the apostles. This meant that they were saved under the same kingdom, prophecy, message as the apostles. 2 Peter 3 verse 2 That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, 
and at the commandment of us the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Be mindful of the words. Peter tells Israel to be mindful of the words concerning their prophecy program. That has to do with everything that was either written or spoken by the prophets since the world began. Luke 1 verse 70 As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which had been since the world began. Acts 3 verse 21 Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. The prophets and the twelve apostles spoke the same things, because they were under the same program. 1. The prophets spoke of things that would occur during the ministry of the apostles, while the apostles along with Christ fulfilled those prophecies. Peter wanted them to remember what had been said by them. Paul is not mentioned here because he received his revelations not from the prophets, nor were his words a fulfillment of their prophecies. Paul preached about an unprophesied period of time, which we call the mystery program. Peter was telling them that even though many years had gone by since his first epistle, they were supposed to remember what he had said, and that they should still be mindful of it. 2 Peter 3 verse 3 Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts. In the last days, the term last days refers to a time extending from the ascension of Jesus Christ until the time of his return in glory. It does not deal with just the seven-year tribulation period. All throughout the Old Testament, prophets have spoken about the last days. Peter reminds them that this is still an event that is yet to happen, and that their pure minds should be stirred up by their remembering the words of the prophets. Genesis 49 verse 1, And Jacob called unto his sons, and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. This was a promise of God, that even preceded Noah's day. But just as there were scoffers in his day, so shall there be in the last days. As they mocked Noah, they will mock those who believe in the time of Jacob's trouble. 2 Peter 3 verse 4, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Where is the promise of his coming? All things did not remain the same from the beginning of the creation. God destroyed the world with a flood just before Abraham's day. Since the fathers fell asleep, since their ancestors have died, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. They forget about the flood in Noah's day. 2 Peter 3 verses 5-6 For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. This they are willingly ignorant of. Peter says that if they scoff at the Lord's return then they don't believe the Bible, because there was a flood that was predicted along with the return of the Lord. The earth standing out of the water, and in the water, Genesis 1 verses 1 to 10. The world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished, the flood came true, and so will the return of Christ. Peter says these people are willingly ignorant of God's word, they chose to believe there was no flood, because that would lend credit to the story of the flood in Noah's day. 2 Peter 3 verse 7 But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. The heavens and earth which are now, by the same word are kept in store. The heavens and earth in Peter's day are still with us today, but they are going to be burned up after the kingdom is over. It is the word of God that keeps them in store. Because God said it, then it is going to happen. Revelation 21 verse 22 And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition, this is mentioned below in verses 10 to 12. 2 Peter 3 verse 8 But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Psalm 90 verse 4, For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Peter then makes a statement that many understand to mean that the Lord just may return, sometime after the year 2000. In the year 2000, the world became approximately 6,000 years old, or six days old with the Lord. Based on the fact that God made the heaven and earth in six days and rested the seventh, Many believe that the millennial kingdom will occur sometime after the year 2000. It is 2024 now, and the Lord has not set up his kingdom, nor has the time of Jacob's trouble began, which precedes the kingdom by seven years. Some think the time of these two future events occur 2000 years after Christ's resurrection. The beginning of the millennial kingdom would be the first seconds of the seventh prophetical day. Exodus 20 verse 11, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Most believers believe that the return of Christ is imminent, it could come at any moment, and many believe, as do I, 
that those living today will be the generation that be alive on the earth at rapture. An interesting event happened to a man by the name of Enoch in scripture, which has also given many believers the feeling that the time after the year 2000 is significant concerning the Lord's return. I'll let you be the judge by presenting the scriptural story of what happened to Enoch and then comparing it to the Sabbath, the thousand years as a day and vice versa and the teachings about the rapture found in the New Testament. Jude 14-16 And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words having men's persons in admiration, because of advantage. Genesis 5 verse 24, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Hebrews 11 verse 5, By faith Enoch was translated, that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated, raptured or caught away, him. For before his translation, he had this testimony, that he pleased God. Enoch, a Gentile, could be a type or picture of the church being raptured out from the earth to be with God prior to God pouring out his wrath on the earth. Enoch's great-grandson was Noah, who God used to save the human race after the flood. Many people do not realize that Noah's father Lamech died just four years before the flood and Enoch's son whom everyone has heard of, Methuselah, lived to be 969 the oldest person who ever lived, years old. He is also the oldest person to have ever drowned in a flood. Methuselah was still alive right up until the flood. He no doubt along with Lamech must not have believed Noah's message, because they sure didn't help Noah build that ark. Secular historians like to claim that Jesus was born around 5 BC in order to disassociate the beginning of our calendar with having anything to do with Christianity. Peter goes on to assure us, as well as believers from all generations, that God keeps his promises and that he wants even those who are willingly ignorant to turn unto him for their salvation before it is too late. 2 Peter 3 verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us ward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. His promise, this promise concerns the fire that is to come upon the heavens and the earth after the thousand-year kingdom ends. Peter then goes on to tell us about the day of the Lord, when many cataclysmic events all happen in one day, and God creates a new heaven and a new earth. 2 Peter 3 verse 10, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The day of the Lord, this is not the rapture of the church when the Lord returns to catch away his saints before the great and terrible tribulation period that will come upon the earth. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 2, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. The day of the Lord doesn't begin after the tribulation period but immediately after the battle of Gog and Magog, which takes place at the end of the millennial kingdom. Revelation 20 verses 7 to 8, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Revelation 21 verse 1, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. If you believe the Bible is true, these things should cause you to get on fire for God, because hell is a real place where lost people go. 2 Peter 3 verses 11 to 12, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? The coming of the day of God, Tribulation saints should work to bring as many souls into God's kingdom as they can because it will be an everlasting kingdom. Jude 1 verse 21 Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. 2 Peter 3 verse 13 Nevertheless we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. God has promised in the revelation of Jesus Christ, which was written by John a fellow apostle and a close friend of Peter, who tells us about new heavens and a new earth, where in the time immediately following the kingdom there would dwell complete righteousness. Revelation 21 verse 1 And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. 2 Peter 3 verse 14 Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, 
Be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless. Be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless. Numbers 19 2 This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord hath commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. Hebrews 9 14 How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? 1 Peter 1 verse 19 But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, Luke 1 verse 6 And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. 2 Peter 3 verses 15 to 16 And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Notice that verse 15 begins with the word and, which links Peter's mentioning of God's long-suffering for the little flock with what Paul wrote to the body of Christ. The long-suffering of our Lord, 1 Peter 3 verse 20, where Peter mentions the long-suffering of God in the days of Noah, Genesis 6, Romans 2 verse 4, and 9 22. Paul wrote to the people that Peter is addressing, and many have said that this proves that Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. It has nothing to do with the book of Hebrews. The verse tells you what it was that Paul wrote to them about the long-suffering of the Lord. Where does Paul mention this? Paul does mention long-suffering in 1 Timothy 2 verse 15 and 16, right before he goes to die at the hands of Nero. 1 Timothy 1 verses 15 to 16 This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. The wisdom given unto him, Paul tells us ten times about the grace given unto him, which is a reference to the teachings on the mysteries of the dispensation of grace, which is called the manifold wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 6 to 13 How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world, that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man, which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Now we have received, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, hath written unto you, what did Paul write unto Peter's audience? In which are some things hard to be understood. One of those things was that in Paul first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long-suffering as a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Paul writes other epistles that never become a part of the canon of Scripture, such as the epistle from Laodicea mentioned in Colossians 4 verse 16. The other scriptures, Paul's writings are called scriptures by Peter himself and he differentiates them from the rest of the scriptures because of the fact that they alone are written for the body, of Christ, not Israel. 2 Peter 3 verses 17 to 18 Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen.